Right, welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to have a look at getting 240 hook up into the van. Now, what I've been doing is, because I didn't want uh, to mess about with a separate fuse board and everything like that, uh, and I didn't want to cut a big hole in the side of the van to mount that, so I've had this lot for quite a while but been trying to figure out how to do it so what I did was I bought this one which is basically what they say call for camping those two hooks hook onto a, your tent poles and then you've got your circuit breakers and three uh, sockets and then you run your lead out to your hook up now my thought is to use this inside the van run the lead down and just outside and then I came across one of these which is the female end of the socket but it's got this mounting uh, plate on it and my idea is maybe to the underneath of the back of the bumper to fasten that and lead the wire in then I just plug in plug an extension from there to the hook up on the uh, the site or wherever I am uh, or maybe try and hook it fasten it to the, the the back underneath of the van out of way somewhere so it can't be seen I don't know yet we'll have to have a look at that but that's the idea at the moment uh, what, I, what I have done in the past with this is I've had this in the van put the lead through the window, uh, the driver or passenger side window and then put the window up as far as it will go and uh, use this setup uh, that way but like I say if I can do it with this then it's just like a normal uh, a normal hookup uh, the only thing I might have to do is maybe make a bit of a uh, a bag or something just to put round here and seal this off to try and protect it while I'm not using it but we'll, we'll have a look at that maybe it's, don't know so right we'll get the van open and then I'll show you what I'm thinking uh, in the back of the van now my thinking is if I store the uh, the mains now maybe on top of the battery or even under this shelf make a little clip to put it maybe under this shelf uh, don't know yet and then I can lead the cable round the back of the kitchen and take it out uh, let me show what you can see from here Ah, yeah, you can see right at the back just there. That's my waste pipe uh, for my sink, and that goes out down through the floor just at the back. One second, we'll go round. that goes down through the floor just there I'm thinking if I just elongate that all a little bit so the cable can go through there as well and then we just come to the outside of the bumper I've got a bit of a lip on the bottom which I can maybe fasten it onto so it comes out or try and get it behind the bumper so that I put the plug in uphill that way don't know yet we'll have a look at that get underneath and see what we can do with that right let's just have a nosy right so i've decided that's roughly where it's going to go uh so what we're going to do is mark up and then uh drill the holes bolt it on and then uh, once we've got it drilled and bolted on we can get uh, start feeding the wire through and get the uh, the faceplate all wired up sealer and then hopefully that should stay watertight and be easy to access 
uh, offer there. So that's the plan. We'll see how it works out. Right, so uh, we'll get these uh, drilled in. Right, essentially because I'm fitting this upside down and we're going to have some sticking out of the bumper. So what's going to happen is this bit here is going to fill with water. So I think what I'm going to do is just not cut these little ends off here and hopefully it's sloping back a bit. So any water that gets in there should run round and then come out of these two back bits. This bit here, I'm going to try and fill that with some silicon or some Sikaflex or something to stop the water settling in that. And then hopefully, like I say, anything that gets in while it's there should just run out the back these back corners. So we'll go and cut them, find something to just nibble them out with, and then we'll come back and start bolting it on. Right, so just by using the wire cutters or side cutters or whatever you want to call them it's only soft plastic it's not brittle so it's not uh, it's not going to snap at all you can get rid of that bit like that and then just using a chisel just clean this end up There we are. Obviously what we don't want is I don't want a lip there to hold the water in. So we've got nice two, two nice runoffs there. So hopefully the water can run all the way down and straight out. We'll have to see how that goes. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, we'll have to go back to the drawing board and do something else. Alright, so we've got that hole now filled with white Sikaflex. So I think now we can bolt it up and see how it looks. And we'll see if it's going to work properly. I'll we'll get it on the van and uh, have a look at that. Right, before I put it back on the van, I've got this little grommet. Screws in there and then we've got uh, another grommet with a rubber seal for the cable that screws into that. So before I get it all in place, I'm going to get some Sikaflex round here, seal that in so no water can get in the back. And then I'll do the same with this, although this one has got a rubber seal. But I'm still going to put a bit of Sikaflex around that one as well. So we'll get this done, screwed up, then we'll put it on. Now this Sikaflex is really good stuff, but it is incredibly messy. I'm not sure whether these wipes are going to work on this, but we'll give it a whirl. Not tried it on, it works well on silicon, but I haven't tried it on this. Oh yes, that's alright. Just cleans it up nicely. And hopefully that should stop any water and smooth that back off. Just the old spit on the finger and gently mould it into place. That's it. So hopefully now that should be sealed round there enough to stop any water getting in. 
And then when I do the same for this one, when I get this one in place, in fact, I'll do this now. Nice and steady. That's it. Thread this one in. Wait for a minute. All of the players. So it's incredibly messy stuff. That should keep it watertight in there now. So it just cleared some out of the just cleared some out of the hole so the cable can come through that should now all be nice and watertight in there got that nice and solid next job is to get the cable through right you can see the slope running backwards so hopefully those slots we've cut out of the back there if any rain gets in here it's going to run down and run out of the backs so hopefully that should keep this part of it all water free And then you can see down there with the hole that's all sealed you can see the sicker flex so you think you can see it that's in there so that should keep it all watertight touch wood it might actually work better stood up like that because then once I've got the toilet in there that's going to stop it falling And I've got room to coil some cable up at the side of it that might be a safer way than trying to put it on top of the battery so right let's have a look at feeding the cable uh, getting that round to the back and see if we need to uh, alter that hole where the pipe goes through or not I think if it's going to be used that's an ideal place for it I can access all the plugs, I can get to the breakers, it's not in my way anywhere. So all I need is enough cable to run from there, down into that corner, run along the back of the kitchen to where the pipe drops down the back there and through and into the plug. And then the rest of this cable, once I've cut it and joined it into that plug, I'll put another one of these plugs on the end and that'll be my extension cable to run uh, to wherever the mains is coming from. So let's have a look at how that goes. Right, we've got the cable through. Didn't go as planned. Like I said, I was hoping to get it through the same hole as this, but that didn't work. So I've just drilled another hole at the side just to get the cable through. Don't know whether you can see this from under here, but. That's where we've come through, just at the side of the pipe. Uh, I'm going to have to try and get something to hold the cable 
out the way of the springs uh, so it doesn't get trapped or doesn't rub through so we'll have a look at that in a bit but we've got enough cable coming through now and we'll get the plug connected to that seal it all on and then uh, not far off Before I seal all this up, I said I'll put some Sikaflex round to seal it and screw it in. I'm going to put plug on the end, plug it all together, make sure everything's all right before I mess about sealing it all up. So, cable in there. Seals up nicely. Making sure that locked up before I did anything else. And same again, just repeating the process. Right, so now that's connected and we've connected this end to our mains adapter. So we've got power going through there now. So it's time for the moment of truth to see what we've got here. So I'll flip the breaker. Right, so we've got our LED light on. Now it's time to check whether it's wired properly. And that's it. Three greens mean we're wired up correctly and we've got power. So everything there is working absolutely fine. We're out. So that's it. Everything there working fine. So drop the breaker the power goes off and that's the power off all safe now we've got to do is tidy all the cabling up uh, find the proper place for this to stay 
uh, sort that bit of cable out at the back end underneath so it's not going to rub anywhere and that's another job done so we'll crack on with this and then I'll show you when we're all back together right so now we know everything's all right it's time to see all this together so we can unplug it oh, it's a good seal in there oh, that's that unplugged and then so we get some sealant around there Using the sickle flex again. Just nice and carefully. And as you can see, some idiots put a wire right in way. using our wipes best we can clean it off like I said it is really messy stuff this well it's what I use to seal the uh, my little extractor to the roof and it's worked very well so hopefully it will work just as well on this that doesn't look too bad at all there move that out of the way and the next thing I've got to do is tighten the seal up on the back of the plug now we've got the cables in place that's just this gland nut here make sure that's nice and tight and that cable is in there as tight as we can get it and that should seal around there now nice and oh, nice and tight there that's not moving it's locked in place Yep, the seal around there's nipped up nicely. Well, that's it now, all in. Just need to sort this cable out now. Try and get it uh, just fastened so it's not going to rub anywhere. So let's have a look at that. Right, so that's it all sat in position there. All I need to do when I want it now is just pull it out, uh, obviously connect it up to the mains and we're away with power, you've seen it working. Now I'm not saying this is how things should be done, I'm just showing you what I've done to save money and uh, get the power in where I want it to. It probably won't work for everybody else but uh, I've been priced uh, the proper mains board up and everything else that's needed the wiring for the sockets and everything else this works out much cheaper than uh, than doing it that way plus uh, I haven't had to put the big hole in the side of the van for the proper uh, plug all I've done as you've seen is drilled two little holes in the bottom of my bumper and bolted that plug on now if that plug rots away every 12 months I think the plugs are about four or five quid off Amazon so I can afford to keep changing them if needs be hopefully it won't because we've sealed everything everything's got sicker flex all around it and everything's all sealed so hopefully nothing's going to get in there uh, but we shall we shall see on that one but all the cables are all nicely tucked away uh, the toilet goes back nicely 
just put the shelf back down there we go that's done and out the way and that's it all in and done and I'll just show you what I've done round the back to secure the cable I'll just climb back underneath uh, what I've done I've used some of uh, some of this cable protector uh, and oh, uh, just getting myself down and what I've done I just wrapped it round here so that if it does start to rub at all on this chassis member uh, then if it rubs there look then it's going to hit this first and then just use a couple of table, cable ties uh, just to hold it in place not not firmly but just to keep hold of it I'll just need to keep a check on these to make sure they don't wear and uh, and snap uh, but like I say I can keep an eye on them and then that's it oh all done so plugs there like I said well, I think what I'll do I'll get a, a plastic bag of some description to go over there maybe just with uh, a tie wrap round it for when I know I'm not using it uh, just to keep any water from getting in and then all I need to do is uh, take the bag off and we're away Right, that's it that's the van all back together everything tucks nice and neatly away you'd hardly know we'd even been there but everything's there now ready for if i end up on a campsite or somewhere where i need power i can now do it without having to have a window open and do it safely like i said this is not a how to this is just showing you how i've got round things so if it's been helpful for you or interesting or anything like that uh, give us a like and subscribe and don't forget to share it with anybody who you think might be interested thanks a lot for watching and we'll catch on next one